Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we've got probably one of the hardest challenges I've ever attempted. Obviously, the cup lock will never be beaten. You know, go watch that if you haven't. But, in today's video, we are going to be seeing if I can beat Cuphead without killing any minions. Just a quick game theory for all of you. Maybe the bees are working for Hitler. What is a minion? A minion is literally anything that the boss sends out. Although, if it has a knockout screen, or if it's actually a part of the boss's HP, I did not count that as a minion, but if I can kill it without dealing any damage to the boss, then I counted it as a minion. So yeah, the rules are pretty simple. I'm not allowed to kill any minions, and all bosses must be completed on expert mode. Just a quick reminder before we start this video, only 5% of you that watch my videos are actually subscribed. I don't know why. Is it, is it like, is it me? Don't, don't answer that. Anyways, just subscribe to the channel because I'd really appreciate it and all my videos go to your subscription box, so it just makes it easier on you. Also, we have a Discord. The link will be posted in the description. It's just a really cool place to hang out and talk about Cuphead or... I don't know, but it doesn't matter. Just join the Discord because it's cool. If you like this video, consider subscribing. And if not, you could leave a like. And if not, I hope you enjoy it. So with all that out of the way, let's get right into the video. This is later editing me talking. I forgot to say that I'm probably going to make another video of all the boss fights just so you can see if I killed any minions. I don't think I did, but you guys are better critics, so... Yeah, that video is going to be out in a bit. I'm not going to have it up instantly after this because I still have to edit it. But yeah, it's going to be out in a bit. Instead of going to the usual boss, we're going to mix it up and go straight to Ribby and Croaks. If you don't know already, I made a separate video on Ribby and Croaks. So you can actually watch that video if you want a more in-depth strategy. Because I'm not going to make it in this video because I already said it. But yeah, watch that video if you haven't. During this boss fight, the only problem is going to be in their first phase, because if you don't know, Croaks actually sends out a couple fireflies, and by a couple, I mean a lot. For this boss fight, I went as Miss Chalice, so I could have her invincibility roll, and I could also have her extra hit point in Super Art 2. Basically, the strategy was dodge around until I get my super built up, and then stand right in front of them using the spread shot, so then I can make sure that I don't kill any of the fireflies. But if some of them manage to smash their face into the ground, that's not my problem. After a significant amount of spread shots were shot into this frog's crotch, we were done with that phase, and phase 2 and 3 are easy because there's no summons, so we're done with this boss. After that terrible boss, we're gonna go to literally the easiest boss in the entire game, Goopy Legrand, because he doesn't have any summons. So yeah, this is literally just completely regular Goopy Legrand. But just don't look at the hearts in the corner. <laughs> I told you not to look. Anyways, with that boss done, let's go to a boss that's a tiny bit harder, the Root Pack. You might be thinking to yourself, but there's not actually any summons during this boss fight, and technically you'd be right, during the potato phase, there's nothing that I would count as a summon, that's the same as the onion phase, but technically, during the carrot phase, there are summons because they're not a part of the boss's HP, and I can kill them, so technically they're summons. But with Miss Chalice's double jump, they're very easy to loop, so all I did was do that and use the charge shot, and this boss was pretty easy. We've got three down and two to go, but I regret to inform you that one of them that has to go is probably one of the most difficult bosses in this challenge, and that boss is Hildeberg. I like the mini compilation for Jumpless Grim Matchstick, and I think this also deserves one. I'm not 100% sure if this needs a volume warning, but I yell a moderate amount, so yeah. There's also a lot of swearing, I mean, if you don't want to listen to that, then you can just skip to this timestamp, but I felt like it made the compilation less funny if I censored all of it, so, yeah. I gotta use this when there's nobody on screen. Fuck! Cool beans, brother, fuck you! Fuck! Mm. Mm. Ah. Fungal dupers, bro. Fuck! 
Man. Direct line of sight. Good job, me. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I didn't even do nothing, bro. <laughs> There's fucking three of them. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? I'm not feeling too good about it. Whoa! Just kidding. I'm fucking pranking you. Oh shit! I ain't pranking you no more. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. <laughs> okay. I fucking killed him. How did I kill one, bro? They ain't even on screen. Ah! Bro, the cricket. The cricket. The cricket is in my light, bro. The cricket. The cricket is in my light. Ah! That's unfortunate because I can't dodge that. Ah! Can you just like... Whoa! Ooh, call me Dream Cheese. Fuck. Stop. Bro, I didn't even do anything. Fuck, why? Why? Can I win the game of fuck you, boy? You are a little bitch. No! 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 Fuck, I fucking had it, bro. I had it, bro. Stop, stop. I'm gonna need to make explanation there. What if I just throw my controller so high in the air that it comes down and I just fucking die? So yeah, funnily enough, I don't actually have much to say about this boss fight. My main strategy was just to shoot the boss as much as possible while the minions were on screen so I know that no more would spawn. And yeah, after just tons of attempts and just getting lucky with none of them running into the bullets themselves, we were able to beat this boss. I'm just gonna address this really quick. Technically, during the Sagittarius phase, you could make a point in saying that the blue stars are summons, but the wiki doesn't straight up say that they're minions, so I didn't count them. You can if you want to, but I really don't care. And also, it's a star, it's not like it's living, so it's still pacifist. Anyways. The final boss of Inkwell Isle 1 is obviously going to be Cagney Carnation. Simply put, this boss is actually pretty easy. All you have to worry about is his first phase where he spawns like a lot of stuff. But if you just choose your openings for charge shots, it's actually not a bad phase. And then once we beat that, we're pretty much set for the rest of the boss fight. I use spread shot for the remaining phases just because it's way faster than using the charge shot. And yeah, pretty easy boss overall and we were able to finish it. With the vegan finished, we're done with Inkwell Isle 1 and we're on to Inkwell Isle 2. You know, the first boss of Inkwell Isle 2 is gonna be Barnas Von Bonbon. Bon. Now I already know you're typing in the comments, Oh, but Chicken Ninja, the dudes are minions in this boss fight. Shut up. No, they're not. Refer back to the rules. If it's a part of the boss's HP, then it's not a minion, so shut up. Anyways, with those rules in place, the only minions in this boss fight are the small jelly beans that go across the bottom of the screen and the big clouds that she shoots at you during her third phase. With that said, this boss fight's actually pretty easy. For all the segments with the minions, I decided to go with the charge shot just so I can select when I would shoot. And for her final phase, I went with the crack shot just because it's the best. For the winning attempt, we got the gumball machine, the jawbreaker, and EDP. And then after that, all we had to do was just not die to the final phase, and it was done. Just to switch it up, we're gonna fight Beppy next. This boss actually has a surprising amount of minions. During his first phase, I counted the ducks as minions because the wiki does. During his second phase, the balloon dogs are also minions. And then during his final phase, the penguins are minions. Even with all those minions, since I missed Chalice, I've got the invincibility roll, so the first phase is easy. Same goes for the second phase because I've got the charge shot, so I really just have to dodge with the double jump. The third phase has no minions, and the final phase, I want to use my spread shot during the beginning of his phase, and then once he actually sends out penguins, I'm going to switch to the charge shot, and it's pretty simple after that. Our next boss up is going to be Jimmy the Great. The only phase that actually has minions is phase 3, and phase 3 is a serious problem because he sends out a lot of minions. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. The strategy for this boss fight is actually pretty interesting. During his first phase, I want to parry and do as much damage as possible, including using my super. 
And then for his second phase, when there's a pillar with two heads on it, I want to kill both heads because if you don't know, it actually deals more damage if you kill both. With the tons of damage in both phase 1 and phase 2, we can pretty much skip the entirety of phase 3. Clean, bro. After that, phases 4 and 5 are completely normal because there's no minions, so we don't have to worry about anything, and we got it done. Although, after Jimmy, we do have another plane level, Wally Warbles. This boss fight was pretty annoying, it was a lot like Hildeberg, but a bit easier because I knew the strategy now. Again, the strategy was just shoot him while the birds were on screen, because no more than four can spawn at a time. So when the first row of birds would come out, I could shoot him then because I knew that no more would be there. So yeah, that was the main strategy. It really worked well in the second phase because whenever I saw the birds appear, I would stop shooting to make sure I didn't accidentally kill one. And then if I could get them out of sync, then I could shoot while the birds were on screen. And yeah, once we got past that phase, we're on to phase 3, which is easy because there's no minions. And the same goes for phase 4. And after a couple bombs, we killed him. We're on to the final boss of Inkwell Isle 2, Grim Matchstick. And he is really easy. He doesn't even have any summons, so I beat it first try, and I just decided to make it harder. So I said in the third phase, I couldn't kill any fireballs, even though they're not minions, but it made it harder, I guess. I still beat it first try, but yeah. The first phase is just completely normal. Second phase is the exact same. And during the third phase, I'm going to use the lobber and just in between when he's shooting the fireballs, I'm going to want to shoot so I don't accidentally hit one of them and have to restart. But yeah, after a bit more time than usual, we beat him. Our next boss is obviously going to be Honey Bottoms. For this boss fight, the only phase that really matters is phase one because that's the only one with minions. Just as a fun fact, this was actually the original idea for this challenge. I was doing this boss for a mini challenge, and I thought I might as well turn it into a big challenge. So yeah, after a few charge shots, the first phase goes down, and then it's pretty simple after that. Phase 2 is perfectly normal, and we beat it pretty easily with the lobber. I try to deal as much damage as possible during your phase transition, just so I don't have to deal with phase 3. But yeah, after a couple more hits, we killed her. The next boss in Inkwile 3 is going to be Wiener Rat. For this boss, it's actually pretty simple. The first phase and the second phase don't have any minions, so we're fine in that department. The first phase is especially easy because I'm playing as Miss Chalice, and I probably did the fastest phase 2 I've ever done in this fight. It was actually, like, insane. But yeah, after that, on expert mode, the cat spawns four ghost rats, but they're easy to deal with if I just stand in the middle. And I can also double jump and use my EX for a lot of damage. And with that, we're done. Alright, we're switching it up. The next boss is Calamaria. Now I know you would probably expect this boss to be really, really difficult considering how many minions there are. But I actually beat it first try. During the first phase, I got really, really good RNG. The only rotation with killable minions was the one with the puffer fish, and I could just dodge them without having to kill any of them, so yeah. Now before you say this, parrying does not count as killing because you're allowed to parry in pacifist runs on running guns, and you can still get the P rank while parrying, so no, they don't count. Once I entered the second phase, I just tried to shoot her as much as possible when the eels weren't on screen, and it actually was pretty easy. Once she enters her final phase, there's nothing to kill but her, so it's pretty easy. The next boss we're gonna verse is, of course, Briny Beard. This boss is actually really similar to Calamaria because it's mainly just RNG based. The only minions I can technically kill are the dogfish. Other than that, there is the squid. I did not kill it in this run, but technically you cannot kill it. But other than that, there is the shark, which you cannot kill. And then other than that, there's literally nothing else in this boss fight, so yeah. Whenever those quote-unquote killable minions would appear on screen, I would switch back to the charge shot. But if they weren't there, then I would just use the crack shot. And yeah, we beat him. The next boss of this challenge is going to be Sally Stageplay. 
And something nice, she doesn't actually have any minions. She does have minions in her secret phase, but I'm not going to make it even harder. So, yeah. Her first phase is fine. Technically, in her second phase, you can kill the babies, but... Uh, you, they don't die, they just get deactivated. I don't know. But yeah, other than that phase and the secret phase, which I didn't do, there's nothing else to kill, so this was really, really easy. So easy that we even got an S rank. Oh, oh, you already know it, and do it, do it, but. Sadly, all the fun in the S rank stop here because every boss after this causes absolute existential dread and guaranteed piss in the bed. The next boss is gonna be Dr. Cal. Now this boss cannot be talked about without a mini compilation. Let's go. Jesus Christ. Huh? <laughs> well, that's all you get for a mini compilation. Literally all the clips are either me swearing or me yelling, so they're not going in the video. For the first phase, I wanted to kill the bottom part first, just because I don't really like the robot things that come out and I prefer the bombs. And yeah, for the rest of the first phase, I really just tried to get the bombs to run into each other because then that gets them off screen without me doing anything. And for the second phase, I used my super when I could, just because it pretty much kills his entire health bar for the second phase. And for his final phase, it's just regular Dr. Cal, there's nothing to worry about. So I parried as much as possible and used my super as much as possible, and we got it done. The next boss is going to be the Thanos of this challenge. The absolute worst boss for this challenge, the Phantom Express. Now this is no Dr. Cal situation. This deserves a real compilation. Ah. Ah. What? What? Excuse me? <laughs> oh my god. Fam, what? I don't understand! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, how many times do I have to go like that for it to actually fucking work? Answer more than once. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god, bro. How am I supposed to keep track of all this shit, dude? Again, much like Dr. Cal, I'd show more of this, but the rest of it's literally just me complaining. But yeah, if you couldn't tell, this boss is really, 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 really hard. And that is pretty much all because of his first phase. If you don't know, during his first phase, he spawns about 18 fucking million eyeballs, and my job is to not kill a single one of them, and kill him at the same time. Yeah. Literally the only way I could do this part was hitting him with charge shots in between dodges and also parrying until I got my invincibility and then I would just damage tank with the spread shot so I could kill him. Going into the second phase, most of the time I would only have one hit so I'd try to parry as much as possible so I could get my shield heart back and other than that, this phase isn't really that bad. All I have to do is just not suck and this is fine. Phase 3 looks like it's going to be pretty bad, but it's actually not terrible. All I gotta do is loop the ghosts multiple times and use my charge shot as much as possible, and it's pretty easy. Once the final phase comes, my main goal is to just loop the ghosts until they're all matched up. And then once they're matched up, I can actually take damage and they'll all die. I know it looks like I'm actually hitting them with the charge shot, but I'm actually not. If you look, you can see them, they actually take damage before the charge shot even goes off. So, yeah. And then other than that, I just have to watch where my charge shot goes and make sure I'm not hitting any of the pumpkins. And we're done with the hardest boss of this challenge. Our next boss of the challenge is going to be King Dice. 
Now, me being funny haha -ha man, I thought it'd be cool if I could beat every single mini-boss. I, I, I don't even know anymore. Not every single mini-boss has minions in its boss fight, so we're gonna go through every single one of those right now. And before you say anything, they're mini-bosses, they have a knockout screen, so they're not minions. Shut up. For this fight, Chips Bedigan, Mr. Wheezy, Hop is Pocus, Fear Lap, Pirouetta, Mangosteen, and Mr. Chimes all don't have minions. Although, before we get into the other mini-bosses, the Mr. Chimes boss fight this time was completely busted. Just look at this. What the fuck is going on? What the fuck is that? <laughs> Stop. What the fuck is happening? What is that? Stop fucking delaying it! Stop it! I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! Stop doing that! Stop! 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 Just stop! Stop it! What is that? Ah! Stop! Stop! Quit it, bro! Stop it! Stop! Why? Why? Whoa! What is happening right now? What is this garbage? What is this garbage that I'm playing right now? Now with whatever that was out of our way. We go on to the only bosses that matter, the Tipsy Troop and Pippin Dot. The Tipsy Troop is probably the most difficult boss in this challenge, mainly because of the amount of minions they spawn. The only minions that can spawn are the flying olive things. Basically, one of the glasses spawns the olive things, and they kind of just shoot eyeballs at you. So really all I did was dodge around and use my charge shot, and it was pretty easy. The next boss that actually matters is going to be Pippin Dot. For Pippin Dot's boss fight, the only things that they can actually spawn are these weird domino birds that really don't do that much. They go up above the top of the screen, then they go down to the bottom of the screen and go across. So I literally just tried not to shoot them, and yeah, it's pretty easy. And of course, we're on to the main villain, King Dice. Now, this boss fight is really, really easy, especially if you're not total app garbage at parrying. If you can parry somewhat decently, then this boss is actually really easy. So, I didn't have much of a challenge with this, and we're done with King Dice, and we're on to the final boss, the Devil. So, the first phase of this boss fight's actually pretty easy. The only minions he can spawn are the little purple devils that go across the bottom of the screen. So all I really want to do is just jump over the top of them and use my charge shot as much as possible. And yeah, it's pretty easy. The second phase of this fight is even easier. There's technically not even any minions. I counted the bombs as minions just because they're technically alive because they have eyeballs. I don't know. Once he enters his third phase, that's where everything goes to shit. There's stuff beside me, there's stuff above me, there's things dropping onto the platforms. There's so much stuff to keep track of, and I literally just panicked and jumped around until he died. But once he enters his final phase, all the minions die off, and we know we've won, because there's nothing else for us to kill, and we take home the victory. We did it, boys. Let's go. <laughs> I was celebrating too early. I thought it was three, but it's four. Oh my god, that was great. So, to answer the question, can you beat Cuphead without killing any minions? The answer is yes. Feel free to comment down some ideas for me to do later. This was really fun. Thank you to all the people who suggested it. And yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.